May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Yes, Merry Christmas! Technically, Merry third day of Christmas. It's a Sunday, the first Sunday in Christmas, the last Sunday of 2020. Ooh, can I get an amen, a hallelujah, and a thanks be to God. This is the last Sunday of 2020. It's almost over. We are going to make it out of this year. Whew, and it's been a year. Man, oh man, it's been a year. Year full of challenges. The pandemic of COVID-19. The pandemic of systemic racism that still exists along with COVID-19 in our society. It has been a year and we are ready to let it go. I haven't met anyone that isn't ready to say goodbye to this year. So we will. We are going to say goodbye to this year. We have passed the winter solstice now. We are in winter, though sometimes in Texas it's hard to tell. We are in winter and passing the solar, um, the winter solstice means that we will each day get a little more light. Every day gets a little longer. Every night gets a little shorter. There is more light in the world today than there was yesterday. That's good news. And it's part of what John is talking about, but not exactly. Right? So John, when he talks about the light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light, he is not talking about the sun or electricity or batteries in a flashlight because all of those will go out. What John is talking about is the light that has come to us through Jesus Christ, and that is a soul light, a light that we all have. A light for all people. We all have this light. We all want this light. We all need this light. We all have it. But we don't always all feel that we have it. Sometimes it's hard for us to believe that we have light within ourselves. And that's when we need each other. That's when we need somebody else who is feeling their soul light to come into our lives and share that light with us. Like a candle, right? A candle, one candle doesn't put off much light. A little bit. Not in this area. I love it in, in movies when somebody lights a candle and the whole room lights up. It doesn't happen that way. You light a candle and this much light shines. But you put another candle next to it and you get a little more light. Another candle, you get a little more light. Community of candles. It's a lot of light. We need a lot of light. We need each other to light our ways. We need our own light when we have it and we're feeling it. We need to share that light with others when we have it and we're feeling it. And we need to remember that it's not always going to feel like we are light. Yet it's there. It's there and it's for all of us. I think this is such good news. The true light that shines on all people all people. Nobody misses out on the light. The light shines on us all. What are we going to do with our light? That's a good question. There are a lot of things that we can do with our light. In the recovery rooms, they talk about needing to light up the dark crannies to see within ourselves the changes that we need to make. And that's important. We need to see into the darkness of our own souls to see what needs to be cleansed, to see what needs to be given up. That takes quite a bit of humility. We need light so that we can repair what is broken. When I was a kid, I would hold the light for my mom and she would fix things. You know, if there's container of things. I don't know, my mom was always one of these people that would fix things. And I, she's like, hold the light. My job holding the light was just as important as my mom fixing. Because without the light, she couldn't see 
but needed to be repaired. So we hold the light for each other. We are the light for each other. We get to share this light with each other because of Jesus, because Jesus came into the world in this wonderful, mystical, magical theology that John gives us, completely different from the other gospels, right? In Luke, we have this wonderful story of Jesus' birth with Mary and all her magnificat self, wise men, shepherds, angels, singing, it's beautiful, right? In Matthew, we get the legitimizing of the ancestry, right? Jesus came from this, 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 this. And in John, we get in the beginning was the word. What? And the word was with God. What? And the word was God. The word was with God in the beginning. And he goes on to explain that Jesus is this word that was with God in the beginning and that nothing came into being without logos, the word, Jesus. Wild, isn't it? Such a mystical way of understanding the theology of the Trinity getting started here. And it's beautiful. Because light is life. It says so, right in the text. That is, life was the light for all people. All the people. You, even you, you have the light of God in you. Right now. You may feel it. You may not. You still have it. And this is a grace. This is given to us without us asking for it, without us requiring it, without us demanding it, without us being able to repay it. This gift of light and life was given to us freely. That is grace upon grace. And I love it. I love it. There is nothing that we have to do to receive this light. There is no law that we have to fulfill to receive this light. There is no wrong that we can do that is so awful that can take this light away from us. Jesus is that promise. Jesus is that promise that grace upon grace is given to us because of who Jesus is, not because of who we are, not because of what we do or don't do. We have been given this life-giving light free, no charge for everyone. So now, now that we have this light, we have an opportunity to share an opportunity to share with those who are afraid and in the dark, an opportunity to shine the light on those who maybe need to see that they're not all that in a bag of chips, the opportunity to share our light, to give warmth to those who are feeling the coldness of life, the pain that life can give us. We all go through these times. We all feel at one point or another like we're not deserving or there's no way we have any light within us or why are we even doing this because it's all pointless. I've heard a lot of that, particularly in this year. It's been hard. And yet there's light. Vaccines are being distributed. That's light. 2020 is coming to a close. That's light. There is always hope, not the hope of vapid optimism that, oh, it's all going to be wonderful and beautiful, but the hope more that Cornell West talks about when he says, it all looks terrible. Nothing looks like it's going right for us. And yet, and yet, we continue to hope because there's a possibility 
that things are getting better. And that possibility has come through Jesus Christ into our life through God. And we all are sisters and brothers, children of God through Jesus, receiving the light, standing in the light, shining the light, feeling the light within our souls, and sharing it with others so that they may remember and rekindle the light within themselves. May this year bring you peace. May this year bring you health. May this year bring you hope. And may you remember that God has given light to you. Amen.